I remember when I was about 15 years old, I got really serious about the piano and I started practicing about three hours a day. Definitely by the time I was 16, I was doing three hours a day all through the rest of high school. In fact, I remember I used to have a job at a restaurant, waiting tables and washing dishes and such. And if I had to be there on a Sunday morning at 11.30 or 11 o'clock for the lunch shift, I remember getting up at 6.30 or 7 o'clock as a teenager and practicing for my three hours just so that I got it in during the day, that I, I wouldn't get so tired by the evening that I couldn't practice because I wanted to get that three hours in. And one of the things I did was I wanted to get good at classical music and I loved it so much but I, I didn't really have a lot of early training in it. So I bought a book called Easy Classics to Moderns by, um, edited by Dennis Agay and it's a wonderful book and I remember opening to the first page and I saw the first of four pieces by a composer I'd never heard of named Henry Purcell. And uh, I couldn't find that book. I don't know, it's buried somewhere in a pile, the Easy Classics to Moderns that I still have, I think. But uh, I've since bought a complete book of his keyboard works. And I wanted to share just a little bit about his music because it's charming. And uh, it's just wonderful music. And if you, um, even if you play jazz or pop or rock, it's really worthwhile to get um, your reading skills together and uh, get some technique from classical music and be inspired. You know, Keith Emerson, Elton John, um, Taylor Swift loves classical music, if you like her music. She donated $75,000 to the Seattle Symphony um, when she heard a piece on the radio or, or on a CD or something they had recorded called Beyond Ocean. And she just sent a check. She loves classical music. In the jazz world, pretty much everybody from Bud Powell, um, uh, John Lewis, modern jazz quartet would be um, uh, more obvious answers. But even in the early days, I heard a story, Lil Hardin Armstrong, who played piano in her husband Louis Armstrong's uh, famous Hot Five recordings, when she was a teenager, she was at this uh, music store, and Jelly Roll Morton, the, one of the founders of jazz, walked in. This is probably, I don't know, around 1900 or 1905 somewhere. And she was a teenager. Now, it might have been a little early, old, later with her being that age. So maybe about 1910, 1915, maybe 1920. Anyway, he walked in. And um, she, the owner of the store said, can you play for the famous uh, jazz pianist? And she played a piece by Rachmaninoff, you know? So the jazz classical connection goes way back. Anyway, Henry Purcell was an early uh, to mid-Baroque uh, comp composer, uh, before Bach, that is, but in the same general kind of style, but he was English. And as such, has a harmonic sensibility that's related to a lot of English folk music. A little more of a, um, like they might use a minor five chord. And then the major five, but that minor five chord has a very relaxing feel to it. You also hear it in like Robin Hood movies and even Johnny Depp, Pirates of the Caribbean, which is kind of modeled on that thing. Anyway, Henry Purcell, uh, very charming. And, and two of the pieces that are in, I think, intermediate classics to moderns are also in this book. I just thought I'd share them with you. This is called a hornpipe in E minor. A hornpipe is a type of folk dance. And uh, this is, it just says from the old bachelor. I don't know, an opera or something. Um, sounds like a reality TV show, right? The old bachelor, and I, probably pretty lively if he was doing a hornpipe. Um, here it is, enjoy. <laughs> I love about Purcell's music is that the chords do go into different places than Bach or Handel or Germanic tradition uh, Baroque composers would. Like at the beginning of the second section, he's just ended in um, E minor. Now he starts the next section in E minor, and then he goes to G major. 
use that a lot, that minor, and then he goes to the five chord of the major, relative major, and then goes there. Even that sounds like very British. Oh, no, I played it wrong. Yeah, I love that shift, and then he goes back to the minor. Here's another one called air in G major, and the word air just means kind of a tune, like a pleasant kind of tune. And Bach wrote air on the G string. Coincidentally, um, I think in the same key, it must be in G, right? Um, here we go. power of improvisation. I messed up at the end, but I played something that I think sounded okay. The end should go. I think I missed that high C. So he does the same thing in this piece as he did in the previous one. He ends here in E minor. And he goes back to G. mistakes. I know they're going to happen. It's how you handle them. So I urge you, if you like this, go out and get either Easy Classics to Moderns, Intermediate Classics to Moderns, or a book of um, Henry Purcell's music and check it out for yourself. Good luck and have fun.